Tonight on Frontline, the game, basketball. The players, two high school All-American athletes. With Derek, this is a uh, grade A rating. They're saying he is a kid that we all should take. He's quick, he's big, he's strong, he's smart, and he's a great kid. Mooney was one of those kids who was misinformed and misdirected. He did not graduate with his class. It's like heroin. It makes him dream of something that's not a reality. Chasing the basketball dream. Derek Lewis is one of the hot high school prospects at Joe Carr's gym. The book on Derek, super quick and efficient, inch for inch, the best high school shot blocker around. And a bonus, he's an honor student. Derek was about eight when he began playing basketball. Ten years and thousands of practice hours later, he's one of the top five high school centers in the country. But Derek, this is a uh, grade A rating. They're saying he is a kid that we all should take. We all should take. Academically, um, character-wise, he's going to represent your program the way you'd like it to be represented. And there are no questions there. Doesn't, there's not one question. He's quick, he's big, he's strong, he's smart, and he's a great kid. We can now vary music time, right? Derek attends Archbishop Carroll High School, this is one way to a get private Catholic school in Northeast school. Washington. Suppose we want our loop to be like There, he's not only a basketball star, but a star student. Every college and university in the country with a basketball team wanted Derek. The recruiting pressure has been intense. Derek's coach, Carol Holmes. We had a lot of them come around and wanted to talk to Derek. What we did, we went through his parents and they set up interviews and coaches were allowed to come to the house and um, just uh, present their program. It can become a zoo uh, when everybody in the country is after an interview or everyone wants to call and just say hello. And it can get, uh, get kind of hairy. Derek and his family live in a comfortable Washington suburb, Temple Hills, Maryland. His mother, Gertie, teaches school, and so does his father, Bobby. We feel that he, he's doing a great job in, uh, of course, dealing with the pressure, the outside pressure uh, on him, but yet still he is maintaining his mm -hmm. average in school. Right. It's going to be really rough out there, but rough. There was a recruiting frenzy over Derek. It meant the tightly knit family found their phone ringing in the dead of night. Or worse, some assistant coach just showing up on their doorstep. All part of the pressure placed on the Lewis family. They will come at night, weekends, um, any time that you could really be caught. Early in the morning, 2 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. We would just ignore the phone most of the time. We never did let them talk to Derek. That was one thing we started out from day one. You're welcome. Along with phone calls, Derek gets letters, hundreds of them. He's got more in the attic. There are boxes more in the attic. The message is the same. Come play for us. Senator John Glenn wrote, and so did a former president. Which, uh, which letter do you remember the most? Uh, uh, let's, yeah, I went from Joe Ford. He was trying to influence me to come to Michigan. He wanted you to come to Michigan? Right. Did you write it back? No. <laughs> The rules governing college athletics say that student athletes being recruited may visit five college campuses during their senior year of high school. Coaches know that blue chip prospects like Derek may change their minds often before finally deciding on what college to attend because they have so many choices. So coaches and school boosters sometimes offer inducements that even go beyond a letter from a former president. Okay, it was in October. I was on one of my five official visits, and I met a girl, they took me out to, you know, a little party on the Saturday night, and I met a girl while I was there. So, uh, she was a real nice girl and everything, and, you know, I kept in touch with that, I got back home. So, I guess about a week before the early signing period, uh, this group of coaches, the, the college that I visited, uh, started talking to the girl that I met, 
while I was there. And they wanted her to, you know, try to influence me to come there by offering her things and getting her to offer me things. Being violations have always been a problem for the National Collegiate Athletic Association, which is the rulemaking body for intercollegiate sports. About 30 pages in this NCAA rule book deal with recruiting. Students have been offered money, cars, even jobs for their parents. The University of New Mexico was put on probation for issuing phony transcripts. California State at Fresno, Wichita State and Oklahoma City University all are on probation for recruiting violations. The NCAA now assigns investigators to police the recruiting of the top 100 college prospects. But even the NCAA acknowledges that parents need to report illegal offers. Luckily for Derek, his parents studied the rules. How do you make a decision as a parent? Uh, what the best school is, who's offering something that's good for your son or bad for your son? How do you choose? What we did, we did a lot of research. We read up on the NCAA rules, and from that we started looking at those coaches, those who were calling, and we knew that they were not supposed to be calling. We thought about that, and then when they came into the home, we just listened to what they had to offer and what they had to say. We knew how much they could do and what they were not supposed to do. And from that, we would make notes. And then after they leave, we would sit down as a family and discuss it. Derek finally signed this letter of intent to attend the University of Maryland. Like hundreds of other student athletes, he'll be on a full scholarship. But sometimes players like Derek get injured. Their athletic scholarships are yanked. Just in case, Derek's family has reached a separate agreement with the university, guaranteeing a full scholarship. This is the coach who convinced Derek to come to the University of Maryland, Lefty Drizel. He's one of the best recruiters around, and his team just won their conference championship. That's a potent combination, good school, championship team, and good recruiter, and the reason Northeastern's Jim Calhoun lost to Lefty in the competition for Derek. He's going to go into a coaching program uh, with Lefty Drizel, who I you know, first I think is a tremendous guy, and, 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 and going to a great league like the ACC, and he's going to be playing before most nights, 15, 18,000 people. He's going to be uh, really kind of, the, in essence, I'm sure coming in initially, somewhat the toast of Maryland. I mean, he's going to be one of those guys who's going to get an awful lot of acclaim just by walking on campus. You know, he's going to have a whole different life. NBC Sports presents the best of college... Players like Derek with star quality and academic excellence are literally money in the bank. The reason? These big-time colleges rely on them to win big games. That produces big money through television. He just can go by people Consider, the men's basketball championship this spring earned $25 million for the NCAA. Two on one to Ed Goodman. That's 64% of its revenue. Some of that even supports academic programs. Picks up a win. This fall, Derek Lewis will enroll in the School of Engineering. And this summer, he's going to be taking six credit hours in the university's engineering school, plus play basketball. That's a heavy load. Derek will find that the hours he spends practicing and playing will also be long and grueling. Three hours a day in practice, about 17 games on the road, away from campus and classes. His parents think they have an understanding with Coach Drissell, which will protect his ability to study. He has agreed to us that he will make sure that Derek gets a college degree. He will make sure that that comes first. He has promised to work his practices along Derek's basketball, I mean, academic schedule, so that he will be able to get the school work and not let uh, basketball conflict with that. All right, and, and why y'all run? Look, there's no Coach Lefty Drizel thinks the best way to protect young players like Derek is by not allowing freshmen to play varsity ball. I like the way we used to have it with the freshman team, and the freshman team played 12 games, and that way every freshman that you recruited was a starter, and they usually averaged 15, 20 points a game, and they were happy their freshman year. Then there's a sophomore. Some of them sat on the bench a little bit, and then by the time they were junior and seniors, they started. I think that's by far the best way to do it. But, you know, the administrators and the people in the power of college athletics are always looking at dollars and cents. That's the main 
thing in their mind. I disagree with that, but it would be much better, I think, that they didn't play athletics. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. Will there be changes in Maryland's school system? Find out next on Maryland News Wrap. And at 11.30, get a wrap-up of the week's financial and economic news on...